Good evening. Uh, I'm calling this July 18th Sammamish Planning Commission meeting to order. Tonight we have a, hopefully a fairly brief topic to take care of some technical stuff. Um, so we'll get through it. I want to start out with roll call starting on my right. Ritu Jain Dapure. Larry Crandall. Josh Amato. Mark Boffman. Eric Brooks. Rushino Farrell. Thank you. Okay, so next is approval of the agenda. Um, does anyone have any comments or objections to this evening's agenda? Seeing none, the, the agenda is approved. Uh, has everyone had a chance to review the minutes from the June 20th meeting and are there any comments or any objections to those minutes or corrections? Um, I just noticed uh, Ms. Herring's name was misspelled. It just has one R, Karen Herring. So if you could just correct that, thanks. Some of those I write down, so I would have to admit that I'm sometimes guessing. If you wrote it down, I won't take credit for that, but sometimes I do. Yes, and it would be very helpful if you could sign in if you're giving public comment, then we can make sure we spell everyone's name correctly. Okay, any other comments? Are we okay just approving those minutes? Seeing no objection, the minutes from the last meeting are approved. Next, we'll have a public comment on non-agenda items. So just as a reminder, this evening is about some uh, technical things that we need to do with the comp plan in anticipation of the approved urban forest management plan. So if you have a comment about something other than that, now would be the time. Is there any public comment on non-agenda items? Mary? My name is Mary Wichter and I live at 408 200 8th Avenue Northeast in Sammamish. So I think I'm speaking on non-agenda because I understand the horse is out of the barn and you actually passed the Urban Forestry Management Plan in the 81 page packet from June 20th, right? Um, so I'm gonna speak to that a little bit. Um, I was part of, uh, or I listened to the city council retreat a couple years ago, the last one that they had. And uh, on the Sunday of that retreat, they talked about, hey, we have these public hearings. There's a first public hearing, a second public hearing. And so the community development had suggested, could we just go down to one public hearing? And council discussed it a lot and they really wanted to listen to public input. And I happened to be there, so I raised my hand. They called on me and I said, you know, when you have to go through two public hearings, it takes, you know, posting and another packet and another time. And I said, I totally get the amount of time. And I said, and if you're not listening in the first public hearing, it doesn't matter if people say it twice. So I said, I'm willing as part of the public to say that if you wanna go down to one public hearing, it's fine. And at that point, I believe Kim Adam Adams Pratt was the legal counsel there. And she said, there are some things that require two public hearings, but otherwise you were only gonna have one public hearing for everything. Um, and so that was agreed to. And in two years I, since then, I don't think I've seen anything come through that actually had two public hearings. Um, but what I would suggest is, as many meetings as I go to and as much as I try to be informed, I didn't realize that tonight is just the little insert in the comp plan and not actually the thing that you already passed. Um, so, and um, the Zachary Basin Plan, they also did the stormwater and because of stuff, they kind of zipped it on the consent agenda. And even the mayor said, you know, when they ha we have a plan come, it really deserves to be introduced and presented. And even if there's nothing wrong with it, then at least staff can get credit for the stuff that they did and we can learn about it. Um, so when I think there is a big plan, it might be worthwhile to suggest either a continued public hearing or two hearings. Plus a lot of times people are gone the week that it happens and they can't come. Um, and some people either can't send in or need more time to send in. So that would just be a suggestion and overall process. And then also if, if I had a crystal ball and a magic wand, I think we should have done the insert first and then this plan instead of the other way around because then it would have made more sense to me and I would have understood more what we were doing. So based on that, I have 50 seconds left. <laughs> um, I'm just going to say a few things from the June 20th version that was 81 pages that was passed. I did look at the individual goals and I know if there's a guiding light and it has goals, then you can get objectives and regulations put under it. But if you're missing a guiding light, then you can't ever get the objectives done. So the couple things that remain are, I talked about off-leaf versus on-leaf aerials. Like the canopy in the fall, winter is just not the same as the canopy in the spring, summer. And if everybody's replanting trees and putting deciduous in and not conifers, we're really gonna impact that. So I think that's super important. 
I also think flexibility um, for people doing different things with their land is really important. I think we need to look at wildlife corridors and where they are and keep trees there. And then most important, I found out that uh, there really isn't a thing that talks about steep slopes or planting, and I think we need to have that in here somewhere. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. I would maybe just clarify that the Planning Commission has recommended the Urban Forest Management Plan, so we don't really have the authority to pass anything, but we have recommended it to the City Council. Mr. Stickney. Good evening, Planning Commission. Paul Stickney, 22626 Northeast Englewood Hill Road. Just uh, not a, you know, courtesy, I'm not sure the right word, just for information, I guess. A few comments that I'll be sharing with City Council at the time they get the urban forestry plan. A couple of these are repeats and, and much shorter than I explained here, and some are new. I'm going to suggest that the city put in some language to explore having other policies for civic, schools, educational, and utility uses in the city. Because we may or may not want a school district to conform to all the same tree, you know, retention as the, you know, as about half of the individual houses, the private ownership. I am going to suggest that they come up with alternate standards for the existing centers and the town centers, not immediately, but put in, you know, placeholder to work on that as, 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 you know, time goes on. In reading the whole plan, something that struck me. I understand completely planning for, you know, 20 years. That's a, that's a bite of time that can be analyzed and operated on. But I do think the plan needs a lot more emphasis, not as much emphasis, but a lot more emphasis on a true cycle of life for trees, which is a two or 300 year lifespan. I see that missing. Trees get large. How does that work? What happens over time? because we plan in and tend to think in terms of basically our life cycles, but a tree's life cycle is much larger and what are the impacts on a city because this is looking long range. I was very happy to read there was more f fire talk in the plan than I th thought there was and I think that's really a th good thing. Um, a couple other things regarding uh, canopy goals. Uh, I think it would be really cool on page 46 of the urban forestry plan, there's a chart that shows the peer cities and sort of a table or a sort of a sideways table, or I'm not sure I'm using the right term right, but it'd be really cool if they put, you know, you know, percentages on top of all those so that people could see what that is. And something else from a few years ago, the region, the Puget Sound region has a overall target of 40%. I think that's real good information for the public to know that we're already past that and shows how special we are uh, in relation to, to, those, uh, to the other cities. And then I'd also, my last comment, I'd suggest a statistically valid survey at some point in the future to to more fully inform some of the concepts within the plan. That's it. Thank you, Paul. Paul, uh, would anyone else like to make non-agenda comments? And I would tell you that if your comments are just generally related to the urban forest management plan, now is the appropriate time because the agenda tonight is actually about the technical aspect of the comp plan being adjusted. So if it's just a general urban forest management plan, it's a non-agenda item, now would be a good time. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Larry Farmer. I live down the street on 228th. And I, I'm sorry, I missed the first half of this, the one last month. So I'm just catching up on, on, on the plan. Um, but I have a question, though. Uh, when I was re reading the form here, it said about volunteering 85 hours at a Sammamish uh, Park restoration. And I, again, I haven't had a chance to read, read all the details. Um, I'm working on like a, a wetland restoration. Can can that be for a uh, 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 a wet la wetland areas in uh, Sammamish? Can you get credit for that too? You'd have to kind of check with some of our volunteer coordinators with the city, but 
I would guess yes. Yeah, that's good. Thank, thank you. Thanks, Larry. Anyone else? Okay. So let's uh, dive into our hopefully brief uh, new business agenda item. Well, good evening, Planning Commission. Um, I do have one housekeeping item. I have a statement um, to read from our director. Um, this is regarding the 2020 docket requests. Um, through the adoption of the updated procedures earlier this year for amending the Sammamish Comprehensive Plan and Development Codes, the city now accepts docket requests throughout the entire year. However, docket requests received by the end of the business, end of business on August 5th will be considered by the Planning Commission and City Council later this year for approval. Any requests docketed or approved by City Council will be scheduled for legislative review in 2020. Questions and inquiries can be directed to Mary Leitner, Senior Management Analyst with the Community Development Director. So be aware of that date, August 5th. Um, okay, so this is a very short presentation um, prior to our public hearing. Um, the agenda tonight um, is a presentation on the proposed amendments to the environment and conservation element. This will be followed by the public hearing. At the conclusion of the public hearing, Planning Commission will deliberate and make a recommendation to City Council. And as all you, as all you remember, and, to, and pardon me, I am suffering from a little bit of a head cold, so if I sound a little nasally, um, that's the reason. <laughs> um, in 2018, the Planning Commission recommended um, that the City Council approve placing a proposal on the annual docket to amend the environment and conservation element of the city's comprehensive plan to include references to the UFMP. So we have two amendments. The first one is um, updating policy EC 1010 in volume one of the environment and conservation element to revise and remove outdated references. And the second amendment is to, the, um, to volume two of the element, and this includes text summarizing the purpose of the UFMP and adding a dynamic reference to the adopted plan, and that reference would be to our website. So, our next steps. Um, we will um, open and close the public hearing tonight. Um, again, Planning Commission will deliberate and make a recommendation. And, um, vote and vote on that recommendation. Um, after tonight, this will head over to City Council for consideration. That meeting is actually October 8th. That's a joint session with the City Council and the Planning Commission to discuss your recommended plan and these amendments. And unless there's any questions, I will hand it over to the chair to open up the public hearing. Does anyone have any questions? I, I think this is pretty straightforward, but I wanna make sure everyone understands what we're doing, which is just adjusting the comp plan so it references the urban forest management plan, right? Okay. okay. Um, and just to make sure to remind everybody, um, while this seems like a small issue, anytime we change the comp plan, we have to have a public hearing. And so that's why we're doing this, even though the, this particular topic is fairly brief. So I'm gonna open the public hearing, and if you'd like to make a comment on this technical modification, you are welcome to do so at this time. So I'm opening the public hearing. Would anyone like to make public comments about this technical item? Hello, I'm Jan Bird. I live at 3310, 221st Avenue Southeast. Uh, regarding policy EC 10.8, you had the word consider incentivizing retention of trees on existing lots, prioritizing clusters, and or a continuous canopy with trees on adjacent lots when feasible. And I would suggest uh, dropping consider and just say develop a policy to incentivize retention of trees and you know, the rest of it. Uh, you had another one that's uh, policy EC 10.9. It says promote regulatory tools that take in consideration the case-by-case, context-sensitive nature of tree retention and canopy coverage. Uh, we need to rewrite that in plain English. I have no idea what this means at this point. I mean, I don't remember the discussion from umpteen years ago when we 
did the first you know, uh, tree ordinance. And I don't know how you'd write a concrete goal with that. It just, it's so vague. <laughs> and so I don't know what that is. So I'd like to see work on that. Uh, two other things I've noticed, and whether this is the right place, whether it goes into the more the urban forest plan, I'm not really sure. But anyway, there's no mention of climate change and no mention of our own actions on city properties. So first of all, as far as climate change, goal EC.7 says support regional efforts in mitigating and adapting to climate change but there isn't anything directly related to trees. So uh, we're already seeing the cedars die. We know it needs, and uh, we need to be more selective about where we plant them. It's due to drought, those kinds of things. So something addressing that we need to um, address climate change as it relates to our trees. And then I think we need to review some of our own actions on city property related to activities permitted near trees and also tree maintenance. And I know it's against God, America, and apple pie, but the nightmare on Beaver Lake is a concern because we have these heavy wooden structures. They're placed right on top of the tree roots, and they compact the soil. Last year, we began noticing western red cedars, as I've noticed, uh, you know, noted earlier, at Beaver Lake Park. They're dying, and drought is a big cause, but they're already stressed. And then we compact the soil around them by putting all this heavy wooden structures on top of it. And soil compaction is a major cause of tree decline in urban areas. It reduces uh, the area for aeration, for water infiltration, for the roots to you know, penetrate the soil. And also understand the Parks Department has to spend thousands of dollars after it's over with to do restoration, which maybe is only putting grass seed in, I don't know. But I'm also noticing in the areas where uh, the nightmare is, uh, there's very little understory vegetation anymore. And I remember uh, doing a kid's thing at, uh, uh, it was on the uh, one of the environmental days back in 2011 on Earth Day, and I had them go out and try to find different uh, native plants. I had them all tagged out in the forest. And when I did it again last year, it was like, gee, I can hardly find any understory plants to tag for the kids to find. So I, I'm noticing that. And regarding maintenance, I noticed during a work party at Ebride Creek Park recently, there was new bark mulch and was placed right up against all the trees. And as a native plant steward, we're trained that you don't put bark mulch right up to the you know, base of the tree because the tree can rot. So we spent, Karen Herring actually, at one of our uh, work parties, the next time we were there, spent three hours with some young men just spending our time raking it away from all the trees in the park. So I th think we need to look at you know, how we're maintaining and how we're doing activities that are with our trees and whether that can be a goal somewhere here or someplace else. It just seems like that's something we ought to look into. Thank you. Thanks, Jan. I would suggest if those, some of those things on your list sounded to me like they could be in the urban forest management plan. So when it comes before the council, please make those exact same comments. And then I think a couple of those were probably comp plan items that we would address the next time we open up the comp plan, which is, yeah, on the major update that's, I think, a year away, year and a half. Yeah, okay, two years. Hi. Okay, next. Good evening. Uh, Sharon Steinbus, <laughs> uh, 24933 Southeast 14th Street. I'm, I'm speaking uh, to policy EC 10.3, maintain and enhance a street, tr street tree maintenance program, use trees and other vegetation, both native and non-native, as appropriate in all restoration. Uh, I'd like to suggest that this policy item should not be just about street tree maintenance, but also about street tree selection, uh, as well as the selection of other plant and material that might be installed where trees are not appropriate. So I would recommend that you uh, emphasize the as appropriate part of this policy and maybe include some language as to who makes that selection, makes that determination. Who determines what trees and other vegetation are appropriate for city right-of-way plantings, for example? The city has several resident Washington Native Plant Society trained master native plant stewards that could be used as subject matter experts. 
the city pays for, um, sorry, and there will be another cohort of WNPS trained master native plant stewards graduating this winter. The city pays for training these master native plant stewards. Um, therefore, why not make use of these sub subject matter experts to help advise the city as to appropriate plant selection? Or if the city must contract with a professional landscaper for right-of-way plantings, native plant stewards could be used as advisors to review and approve plant selection. For example, rhododendrons are no longer appropriate as street trees where irrigation is not in place because as ch climate change experts suggest, we will be seeing drier summers and winter win wetter winters and rhododendrons require watering through a summer drought. On the other hand, some non-native plants such as barberry are very drought tolerant, but can grow quite large and require the expense of continual maintenance. At some point, the city might opt to remove these plants and install something that requires less maintenance. Thus, the city has paid for the plant, paid to install the plant, paid to maintain the plant, and then paid to remove the plant and install something else. The city may want to save itself the cost of installing plants that either will not survive through a summer drought without watering or that will grow large and require continual maintenance to keep them at an acceptable size. A great partnership is available right here between the city and the WNPS Master Native Plant Stewards. Thank you. Thanks, Sharon. Anyone else who'd like to make public comments? Mr. Stickney? Good evening again, it's Paul Stickney, 22626 Northeast Inglewood Hill Road. And shock of all shocks, this will actually be really short. In the, in the urban forestry uh, text in red, there's a word I had to look up because I wasn't sure what it meant exactly. That word is resilience. It's a, it, it, it's a real good word, but I'd like to suggest something in its place. Instead of the word resilience, add five words, and there is plenty of room because there's not a whole lot of text here, to consider adding the words optimal health, comma, recover quickly from hardships, and then continue. So it would read, the plan includes long-range goals and objectives to to promote optimal health, recover quickly from hardships, species diversity, and sustainable canopy cover. That's my suggestion. Thank you, Paul. Anyone else? Hi, uh, Larry Farmer, uh, 228 uh, uh, Avenue, uh, 3519, 220th Avenue uh, Southeast. Uh, I, I have a question. I, I know I don't know if, I'm, if it's the right time to do this. This is for the comprehensive plan that, that we're writing up, the comment. Is, is this, it, is, <clears throat> this is just adjusting the comprehensive plan to fold in the reference to the urban forest management plan. So once that plan's approved, uh -huh. then all the documents talk to each other appropriately. Okay. Uh, and I don't know if this is the appropriate time to, 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 to bring this up, but it, what, can, can we add a, something to that for the, uh, maybe the, the, rec, the, rec, uh, the parks and rec and, and the planning par department work together and hire a, uh, a biologist for the city? We, do we have one anymore? Do we have a city biologist nowadays? I don't think we do, no. We don't. But the Urban Forest Management Plan does have a section that talks about hiring an arborist. Oh, uh, uh, so that's a consideration, not an absolute, but a, a consideration a as part of the Urban urban Forest Management Plan. A, a, a biologist? An arborist, because this is about the trees. Okay. Oh, oh okay, that's right, okay. So I remember we had a biologist before. I, 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 again, I'm working with a, a, a wetland, so the biologist part you know, comes to mind a lot that, uh, and. And, and it's restoring, uh, oh, it's a forest, it's a forest of wetland. So that's, that's why, you know, I get, kind of get mixed up that, uh, 
you know, uh, that you get, that you're working with w with arborists and, and not biologists. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. Anyone else? Mary. <laughs> it wouldn't be a public hearing if Mary didn't make some comments. <laughs> Okay, since I get seven minutes, this is Mary Wichter. I live at 408 200 8th Avenue Northeast in Sammamish. I have a neck problem and it's really hard to bend over like this, so I brought some trees, smell like pine, to help for taller people. And James Eastman talks a lot too. He's even funnier than I am. It's not quite tall enough for him, but that way you can make it as short or as tall as you need. And I do see people who are so short, they come up and they stand on their tippy toes the whole time. So. Um, I'm donating these as part of the Urban Forestry Management Plan from Joanne's Fabric. Thank you very much. So I'm going to try to talk on agenda now because we're not talking about the plan that was passed, or excuse me, recommended to City Council already. So on policy EC 1010, it says support and implement the Urban Forest Management Plan. I don't know if you want to add the word update because it's not just support it and implement it, but it regularly or periodically needs to get updated. And what I don't like in the plan is, the plan says every five to 10 years, and that could be 10 years. Well, that would be a long time from now. And in what we're looking at from the tree ordinance and getting the plan, all the trees, because the development is about five years ahead investing, we're losing those trees. So I really think we need to do it at the five-year cycle, not the 10-year cycle for the first time. So I hope you might consider some periodicity or cyclicness in here or somehow just show that it's not just supporting and implementing, but it needs to be, we need to have funding and stuff to support it and actually update it as well. And then in the second part where the paragraph is with urban forest, it says, blah, 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 trees in the city of Sammamish. And I think Jane Garrison, when the first time she heard urban forestry management plan, she said, it is not just trees. Trees are part of an ecosystem. There's understory, there's the fungus and the soils, there's the wildlife and the bees and all the things that live. And the urban forest plan is not just about trees because you can't just have trees for a forest. A forest has a great many other things. So I would suggest, and I know how hard it is to get a single word put into anything. <coughs> so let me go here. Um, the purpose of the Urban Forestry Management Plan is to provide a policy guide for managing, enhancing, and growing trees and associated vegetation. Um, and then um, in the city of Sammamish over the next 20 years, and I think Paul had also talked about the 20 years is maybe not a tree life cycle, it's more of a people life cycle. And then um, Mary Johnson is another person who works with a lot of native plants and sh she is not able to come tonight, but she talks to me about biodiversity all the time because where she lives is a wildlife habitat certified and I think some of these people are too and she talks about biodiversity all the time. So the plan includes long range goals and objectives to promote resilience, which you can consider Paul's updates. Species diversity, I think it's not just species diversity, that would be different types of trees, but biodiversity or something that's more wide ranging than just trees and sustainable canopy cover. Um, so we're not just maintaining the canopy, you really need vegetation because like when the trees are little, you have a lot more things growing and then when the trees really are big and they take all the sunlight, it really does drop off like Jan was saying the, the from the thing at Beaver Lake Park. Um, just like where really big cedar trees are where we live, there just aren't any plants, there aren't even any weeds that grow because all the precipitation gets intercepted, the tree goes evaporation, transpiration, and there just isn't enough for like even ferns to grow underneath. Um, and then I had originally asked a long time ago, I said, what does a healthy forest look like? You know, is it the one in Big Rock Park? Is it the one over by Providence Point? Just up from that, is it a whole bunch of trees? And, and the answer is there isn't a single forest that's healthy because it has many different stages, like a young forest has different vegetation in it than a medium life forest than a uh, very dense forest. Um, and then the only other thing I'll, so I'm hoping that you might be able to do some of the wording changes or at least talk about those. I think you guys are doing an excellent job listening, taking input, discussing, and sticking with a word or two and actually getting them put in. Um, but the last thing I was going to say is uh, 
in, I went to a couple of the Heritage Society um, things that they had at the library, and I learned that um, this area has actually been logged off twice. It was logged off originally when the Seattle fire, or excuse me, the San Francisco fire occurred, because um, they needed all sorts of wood, so a lot of logging was done, and then we had the Seattle fire, that was the second time it was logged off, and um, you know that I like maps, <laughs> and the Heritage Society has maps, and a lot of the stuff that's developed up in the north part of the city that's a lot more, um, the north part of the city is a lot calmer and a lot of the things went right because the land use planning was done right. Um, a lot of those tracks where all the development exists now were owned by Weyerhaeuser. And if they were owned by Weyerhaeuser, you know what happened to the trees in the old times. So I think a lot of times looking at the history and some of the things that go forward, um, I just a forest is more than just the trees. And if you're doing things like allowing individual trees to get taken out of places, like if there's 50 lots developing and they each get to take out an extra tree, well, that's 50 trees you're losing. And if there's 50 trees and it's where the wildlife walk through, the wildlife isn't gonna be able to do that anymore for connectivity. And then we also had a, a thing on development that came for fences. And if you're putting fences in places, the wildlife can't get through anymore. So I think it's really important to talk about it's more than just vegetation with trees. It's more than just species diversity. It's more than just street trees. And it's more than just deciduous or conifer. So thank you. Thank you, Mary. Anyone else? All right, I'm gonna close the public hearing. Thank you to everyone who made comments. So what we, what we need to do, um, I would need someone to make a motion and then we can deliberate on all the th things we heard or anything else anyone wants to talk about. And I believe the motion is included in the, oh, it's right here. I'll make a motion. Move to recommend to the City Council the approval of amendments to the environment and conservation element of the comprehensive plan as drafted in Exhibit 1 of July 18, 2019 packet materials. Second. All right, it's been uh, moved and seconded. So are there um, comments or discussion? <laughs> no. Call for the question then. All right, question's been called. So it's been moved and seconded that we uh, move to recommend to the City Council the approval of the amendments to the environment and conservation element of the comp plan as drafted in exhibit one of the July 18th, 2019 packet materials. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. That motion passes unanimously. All right, Kelly, do we have anything else? We do, we have one important announcement. I'd like to introduce um, our new planning commission coordinator. This is Jackie, and I'm going to butcher her last name, Montagnana. <laughs> <laughs> it's Spanish. I'm going to practice. Um, she is, she joined us three weeks ago? One month ago. One month ago. And she will be taking over the duties from Sarah. But you will see Sarah once in a while. She's not going anywhere. Um, but we just have her um, focusing on some other um, important projects in the department. So welcome, Jackie. Welcome, Jackie. Uh, oh. Go ahead. Head Commissioner Crandall. It's on um, the tie, uh, Mr. Jerry Garcia, it, he names his ties, and this one is happy birthday, and I just wanted to remind uh, everyone, if that's uh, not too broad, that the city of Sammamish will celebrate officially its 20th birthday, August 31st uh, this year. So we won't be back before Is there that. a party at your house? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> yes, and as a reminder to everyone, the Planning Commission has an August recess and our next meeting, I believe, is September 5th by memory. Um, so thank you, everyone, and uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing you in September. Would someone please uh, move to close the meeting? I move to adjourn the meeting. Second. Been moved and second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice August. Wonderful.